Hi, I'm Jeff Phillips, and thanks for tuning in this week. Today, I have a world-renowned reflexologist, Claire. And Claire, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yep, Thank you. Yep. Nice to be here. Why don't you tell the viewers a little bit more about yourself? Um, I am a licensed massage therapist in North Carolina. I've been doing massage about 34 years, and I specialize in pregnancy massage, fertility massage, and my own brand of integrative reflexology, which I also teach uh, internationally as well. Okay. Fantastic. So today I think we're just going to focus more on reflexology. Okay. And um, why is it so important for someone to really take care of their feet? Well, if you don't take care of your feet, you're not going to be going very far. And I've talked to a lot of older folks, and one of the things they will say is take care of your feet because if you fall, if your feet aren't working properly, that begins a domino effect of problems in your health. So keeping your feet very flexible, very strong, soft and supple so they're not hard and cracked because that can cause pain and um, cuts, you know, things like that. So you really need to take care of your feet. Um, it really, I had a student say a wonderful quote. She said, the, uh, the fountain of youth begins in your feet. And I thought, I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, you talk about strengthening your feet. How, how do you actually go about strengthening them? Strengthening them? Going barefoot. Going barefoot is one of the best things. And there's been a lot of resurgence of going barefoot. Barefoot runners sort of led the way with the Kenya runners, the ones from Mexico. But a lot of people are getting into barefoot shoes. Um, I find they feel fabulous on my feet. There's a really great author, Daniel Howe, up in um, Lynchburg, Virginia, who wrote a book called The Barefoot Book. And he talks, again, about how important it is for us to use all those 26 bones because they all create sort of a, a mobility. They have to move in a variety of ways, where when you're locked up in shoes, as we have been in the past, shoes that only allow you to go up and down, then a very quick, you know, hit a rock, hit a rut, you twist an ankle, you fall, all of those things could happen. So you want a well-rounded foot where all the bones are kind of manipulating together. Okay, so would walking in flip-flops be useful? It is, actually. He said that's sort of the next best thing to barefoot because, you know, many places won't let you in without a shoe on. So at least while you're going barefoot, I mean, um, in flip-flops, you're gripping and you're also having to make some micro movements because you don't have the security behind it. It doesn't work for everybody, but if you can do it, it's a great way to keep your feet really strong. Okay, cool. Great. Yeah. Now, um, why do so many people have plantar fasciitis? Um, plantar fasciitis is a broad description of any inflammation on the bottom plantar surface of the foot. So it can be a variety of things, and that's where a lot of folks thinks it, think it's only one thing. And they need to really look at where is it on the foot. You know, is it across the arch, which could be some spinal alignment problems, and a chiropractor might help with that. It could be in the center of the foot, and I actually had a PT who connects digestion with plantar fasciitis because he believes we're not assimilating all the minerals for strong connective tissue. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Um, it can even be hydration, that you're not staying well hydrated so your muscles and your tendons and your ligaments are just getting very dry and brittle and that can lead to pain. So again, maintaining flexibility, strength, and hydration might prevent it and there are other things that might help that as well too. So what are some things that can help with that condition? Um, definitely getting some body work. Some body work on the feet, some reflexology on the feet, some work into the lower legs. Um, doing foot exercises, you know, being again able to move your toes, spread your toes, being able to pick things up with your, your toes like little rocks or pebbles. Um, you can't do it when you're in the inflamed, painful state, but getting somebody to work on it, to loosen it up, can help you move out of the, um, the painful state. Ice always helps with in inflammation as well, too. So some people actually roll uh, water bottles that are filled with water and frozen, and that can help at least alleviate the, the pain and give you some flexibility. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Well, um, I've done my, some of my research. I, we're, you know, we're, my, my family and I were into alternative um, health and whatnot, so I have read that uh, reflexology can help with certain conditions, and um, I don't know if it can relieve things like sinuses or sinus issues or back pain. Um, can you elaborate on that? Absolutely. Um, we don't all completely know how reflexology works. We believe it's these nerve endings in the bottom of the foot that go up to the brain and then go back to that body part, but it's not an absolute science. 
But it's amazing because I can work on somebody's toes and they'll start to drain in their sinuses. I've had my students be able to recreate that. And that's pretty incredible that just by massaging the toes, you can get sinuses to drain. And clients, they're usually believers after we do it. Hmm. So. so what about the back pain or well, digestive? Back Back pain definitely it would help because often you see that in the medial arch. So a lot of people think that their their feet are collapsing inward. So by massaging that, loosening it up, I've actually even been able to have be able to tell which vertebrae is out of alignment in their spine. Mm -hmm. Send them to a chiropractor, and then the arch of their foot feels better. Wow! So I can really track it that way as well. The center of the foot in the middle part is the digestive system, and a lot of people back to plantar fasciitis have pain there. So they also often have irritable bowel problems or they're constipated. Um, and massage of that area seems to kind of calm it down. We believe that it calms the nerves down. And so it acts like um, creating homeostasis in the body um, and releases some of the inflammation. So it can help with digestive problems too. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating. Now, um, you've been doing this a long time. Is there any story that sticks out in your mind that you wouldn't mind sharing with us that you've were almost like amazed that yourself that it worked well I have so many stories um, but the one that came to mind recently was a birth that I um, helped with and she was in early labor she came to my home and we did massage but I mainly focused on the uterus point on her inner ankle and I could actually feel the contractions in her foot and she wasn't even feeling she's like oh no nah, it's not that bad yet and so I worked her foot a lot and I worked her belly as well and by the time she got up, she was in full-blown labor. She left my office and delivered six hours later, first baby. Little slender hips, you know, no drugs. They never even got an IV in her. Wow. It was really amazing. So I have seen it actually on a fetal monitor that by working the uterus point, they get contractions. So again, that's really powerful evidence that this does work. Wow. I could continue having this conversation forever, but we're, a little, we're out of time right now. But I want to thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and if you, the viewers out there, are interested in uh, finding out more information about Claire or would like to speak to her directly, please check out the website at the end of this video. And thanks, and see you next time.